Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make your own automated motorized shades with a quantum system. So let's get started. I found that standard motor shades are expensive and the only way to control them is with the provided IR remote. Smart shades are even more expensive and lack the ability to customize how I automate when the shades should be opened or closed. So as a result, I've decided to build an inexpensive and highly customizable motorized shade for the entrance of my workshop that can be opened and closed in a variety of ways using the quantum system and cheap parts that you can find pretty easily online. The shades I will be building will be controlled using four push buttons, its associated interface buttons on the quantum dashboard, and quantum's time of day service. Two of the buttons will be used where I can press them once and they will either fully open or close the shades. The other two buttons will be used where I can press them and they will move the shades either up or down for as long as I hold the buttons down. This will allow me to make smaller adjustments to the height of the shades besides having them only fully open or closed. The time of day service will be used to fully open or close the shades based on a time and day of the week that I wish to set. And since I'll be mounting these shades above the French door that I have as the entrance to my workshop, I'll be adding a door contact that will act as a safety mechanism to make sure the shades do not close while the door is open. For this project, I'll need the two quantum builder bases, a simple bead chain roller shade, a tubular motor with the correct diameter attachments to mount the motor inside the roller shade, the one I found allows me to set the bottom and top limits for the shade, so that's a bonus. I'll also need a simple GPIO magnetic door contact, a 12 to 5 volt power regulator. For this video, we'll be using the Quantum 5 volt power supply kit. I'll also need a 12 volt 1 amp power supply, an L293D H bridge, four push buttons, and a couple breadboards to create my circuits. I'll also have the link on where I got these items in the video description below. For this project, I'll need to create two circuits, one to drive the motor shades and receive digital inputs from the door contact, and the other for the push buttons to control the movement of the shades. Here are the schematics on how I created those circuits. Now that I've created the circuits, with a few added tweaks, I'll power on the builder bases and do the rest of the setup on my Q server. For my motor and door contact circuit, I'll be powering that with the 12 volt 1 amp power supply being directly plugged into the 5 volt power supply kit. For the push buttons, I'll use a simple micro USB cable and plug that into its builder base. Now that the circuits are created and the builder bases are powered on, I'm going to go onto the Q server and continue with the rest of the setup. Alright, now that we're on our Q server, let's go ahead and pair those two builder bases to the Q server. So go to the clients tab, go to the unpaired tab, you should see both those builder bases appear. So we'll just pick one, go to actions, and then select pair. So once your first client is paired, you can go ahead and click the setup button. If you don't know which builder base is which, what you can do is just quit out of the setup for now. And under the paired tab, you can see there's that builder base. Just go to actions and then select identify. When you do that, you'll be able to see that the builder base that it's identifying, the light will flash red and green. So for this one, I know it's going to be our shade motor and door contact. So just go back to the actions and then click edit. And then we will name this shades plus contact. And for the location, okay, let's just say office for this video. And then I'm going to click save. And there we go. Now let's go to our second builder base under the unpaired tab, go to actions and select pair. And now that your second client is paired, go ahead and click the setup. By process of elimination, we know this one's gonna be the push buttons. So let's just go ahead and name this client push button, give it a location as well, and then click save. Now that our two builder bases are paired, let's go ahead and create the firmware for them. So go to the firmware tab, click create new. And then for this first one, we'll do the motor and the door contact. We'll name this shade plus contact. Click create. And now let's add our hardware to the file. The first one we will need is a motor hardware since that's what the tubular motor is. And then for the name, we'll just name this shade one. If you wanna add a second shade to it, you can do the so as well. We'll add this hardware. We'll click the drop down menu. 
Now for the driver, we're going to select H-Bridge because we are using the L293D H-Bridge to control the motor. And then so for the enable pin, in my circuit, I have it as GP2. So I'm going to select that one. For my DC1 pin, it will be GP1. And then for DC2, that's going to be my GP0. Now we have to add our door contact hardware to this file as well. So go ahead and click Add Hardware. And then I'm going to search for Door Contact. And we'll give this a name. And for the name, I'm going to name it Workshop Door since we're going to place this in our workshop. So there we go. Click Add Hardware. Now for that door contact for the driver, it's just a simple GPIO. The pin, we have it to GP6 on that builder base. And then for the debounce, we'll select enabled. And then for pin mode, we'll select input pull down. So go ahead and select that. And then now you can click save. Now go to the actions, click upload. And then we're going to select the Shades Plus contact client. And then click upload. Now while that's uploading, let's go ahead and create our other one for the push buttons. So we'll click create new. I'll name this push buttons. Create. Click add hardware. Search for button. So we're going to have to name these buttons specifically. For this first button, we want it where it's going to be the up button, where you press that button. And as long as you're holding it, the shade will go up. So we'll just name it up and then click add hardware. For this one, we're going to name down because I want this to be the button where the shade will roll down as long as I'm holding down the button. So we'll just go ahead and name it down, click add hardware. Now we'll add another one. This one we are going to name open. Now this will just help distinguish the different buttons, but for open, all I want to do is I push it once and then the shades will roll all the way up to the top. So go ahead, name it open, click add hardware. Now lastly, for our fourth button, we are going to name this close. Now, just like the open button, I want to be able to push this button once and then the shades will roll all the way down till it closes. So I'm going to close, add hardware. Now let's go ahead and do the configuration for each of these. For the up button, for the driver, it will be GPIO. And for the pin, I have it connected to GP0. So I'll select that one. Debounce, I'll select enabled. And then pin mode, I'll have input pulled down because I have one going to a GP terminal and the other end of the push button is going to 3.3 volts. For down, driver will be GPIO, pin mode will be GP1, debounce enabled, and then pin mode is also gonna be input pulled down. Now for the open button, for the driver, I'll do GPIO. For the pin is GP2, debounce is enabled, and then pin mode is also input pulled down. And then lastly, for the close button, driver will be GPIO, pin will be GP3, debounce is enabled, and then pin mode will be input pulled down. So there we go. Here's our push button controller for the shades. This is all set, so let's click save. And then now go to the actions, click upload, and then select the push button client, and then click upload. So while our firmware is uploading, let's go ahead and do the rest of the setup. So since I want to use the time of day service with our Q server to have the shades go up and down based on the time of day and the day of the week, we'll have to activate that service. So what you can do is go to the library, go to services, and for the time of day service, click download. Now once that's downloaded, go to your services tab, and we're gonna have to configure that service. So go to the actions and then click start. So for this configuration, you'll just need to input your longitude and latitude coordinates of your current location, and that way it'll give you precise timing for your service. All you need to do is do a quick Google search. There we go. There's my coordinates. I'm going to click Next. Now, just like this configuration says, you have to also configure your time zone on your queue server. Otherwise, it's not going to work as expected. So once we click Activate here, that's running, but now we have to go to our settings, go to general settings, scroll down and make sure you select your time zone. So mine's already selected. There we go. Once you have done that, now we can create the application for this. So we can just go back, click that icon, go to apps, create new, 
And then I'm going to name this app Motorize Shades. All right, so now that we're on our canvas, the first thing we want to do is add in our hardware objects. So the first one we'll bring in is our motor hardware object. And then let's go ahead and give this one a name. This one will be shade one and click save properties. And the second thing we need to bring in is our door contact. So go ahead and just search for that, bring it in. And then for the object name, let's go ahead and give this a more practical name. So we'll just name this workshop contact and then click save properties. And now since we want to use this door contact as a safety mechanism in this application to notify the system if the door or window is open or closed in order to prevent the motor to go up or down, we're gonna to have to add in some logic objects to this. So let's go ahead and bring in two digital and code objects here, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit, rearrange everything, and there we go. So we're gonna have one and object for our clockwise motion and our other and object for the counterclockwise motion. Let's go ahead and take the out port of this first digital and, connect it to the clockwise port on the motor. Now you're gonna have to play around with this in order to figure out if this is gonna be the open or closed motion for your motor, depending on how you wired everything together. But for this one, let's just say it's open. So the object name, we'll name open. And then for this other one, we'll name closed. And we'll just drag this other one to the counterclockwise port there. And now since we're using this motor object, we're gonna to have to set the PWM since we're only using these digital ports, not the joystick axle. So for the speed, you have to set a value between zero and 255 with 255 as the max. Um, for these shades, I want this to be running at its max speed. So I'm just gonna type in 255 into the default value here and then click save properties. And now let's go ahead and bring in our door contact and attach those to our two logic objects. So let's go ahead and bring one into the N1 port there and we'll do the same for the other one. So the reason we have these digital and logics with the door contact is so when we have another portion of the app sending a high signal or a trigger to the motor, it is not going to make it past these logic gates unless it also knows that this door contact is also triggered high as well. And since we created our circuit as a pull down circuit with that door contact, when the system is notified as the door or window is closed, that is a high signal from the door contact. So that's how everything works here. Let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and bring out four hardware buttons. Just like that. And then we'll also have four interface buttons that will be the same as those hardware objects as well. There we go. Let's do a little bit of rearranging. Okay, now let's go ahead and just take the out port from these hardware objects and put them into the in port for these interface ones, just like this. And then now let's go and label these hardware objects. So the four buttons we want is to have the up and down buttons where the motor will go up and down based on how long you hold the button down for. That's for when you wanna do small adjustments to the shade. And then we'll also have an open and close button, which is where you push it once, and then the shade will either go all the way up or all the way down. So for the first one, we'll name this one up, and then we'll click Save Properties. And then the second one, we will name down, click Save Properties. This one, we'll name open, click Save Properties. And then this last one, We'll name close. Click Save Properties. And now let's label the button interface objects accordingly as well. So for this first one, we'll name it up. We'll label it as up. So now for the dashboard group, 
we will want to create a couple groups to segment everything on the tab in our dashboard. So let's go ahead and create a couple of those. So let's go to the dash builder here. And then for that first tab, let's go ahead and rename it real quick. So we'll just call it motor shade control, click save, and then go ahead and click the group here and then select that motor shade control tab. Now for that first group, let's just rename this one. We will name this up, down, and then we're gonna add in another group and this one will be the open, close group. And there we go. So now we'll just go back to the properties for that first interface button and then make sure you are in the up down group for the motor shade control tab and then just click save properties again just in case. Now for that second one we'll name it down and then make sure it's in the up down group as well. Click save properties. Now for that third one we'll name it open same with the label, open. Make sure you change the group to open close group in the motor shade control tab. So click save properties once you have done that. And then lastly, close, name that accordingly and make sure it's in the open close group as well. And then click save. All right, now we want to attach the up and down buttons to the digital and logic gates directly. That's because we don't have to attach it to a pull stretch or anything because it's just gonna send a high signal to the motor for however long you push that push button for. So take the out port on the up button and just put it into the into port of the opened logic gate there. And then for the down, put it to the closed logic gate down there. Go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning up. Now, next, make sure you change the trigger for the N2 ports for both digital and objects to on. So set that trigger on, save properties, click the N2 port for the second one, trigger on, and then save properties. Now that way we just don't have to put anything into these trigger ports. Anytime these N2 ports receive a value, that's gonna trigger the logic gate and does its thing. So there we go, we have our up and down buttons now set up. Now, before we do anything with the open and close buttons, we are going to create our time of day automated service for the motor. So let's go ahead and go to the service drop down menu and bring out two time of day service objects. Just put them one above the other, just like that. And then we will also bring in one initial trigger code object. And then we are going to connect that to the two trigger ports, one on each of these service objects. Go ahead and clean it up. Now the initial trigger, what this is going to do is once you run this app, it is automatically going to trigger these to start running and it's going to pick the next time that it's scheduled to send out a trigger with this service. So now this first time of day service, what I want this to do is have the motorized shades go up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. So let's just go ahead and name this open 7 a.m. weekdays. Click Save Properties. And then now let's do the configuration for this object. So for Monday, I want that to have the motor shade go up at 7 a.m. So go to the value for it. You can either type in true or just type in one and it'll automatically fill in as true. Just do that and click Save. I wanted to do it for Tuesday as well. There we go. And Wednesday, true. Thursday, true. And Friday, true. Then now we have to set the time for this object. So go to the time port at the bottom here. And then for value, this uses the 12 hour clock. So make sure you type in it as a 12 hour clock. So for 7 a.m., I'm gonna do seven colon zero zero, and then AM, make sure it's AM or PM, and then click Save Properties. So there we go. Here we have our first time of day service object configured. Now let's go ahead and do our second one. For the second one, I want it where the motorized shade is going to close at 7 PM on weekdays. 
So let's go ahead and just name this 7 p.m. weekday. Click Save Properties. And then again, Monday to Friday, we are going to set as true and then save the properties for those. And there you go. Now we have our weekdays. Values are set to true. For the time, let's go ahead and make sure that is 7 p.m. Just like that. And then click Save Properties. Now next, we're going to have to add in some pulse stretchers. So go ahead and bring two of these in here. Now the purpose of these pulse stretchers is once it's triggered, it's going to send a high signal for a certain amount of time. So in this case, when the time of day objects here trigger this pulse stretcher, it'll go and trigger this, and then it will have the motor go up and down to a set time. So we want it to open all the way up or go all the way down, not just you know a little bit. So that's why we need the pulse stretcher. Now with this object, you're gonna have to play around with the timing as well. Um, once you have created this app to kind of play around to make sure those values are set correctly. Now the great thing about that tubular motor is it has a set up and down limit on it that you program, you just have to read their instructions. But then what you do is time how long it takes for the motor to go all the way up and all the way down. And then you can input that into the pull stretcher here, maybe add an extra second or two just to make sure that the program fully completes that range before it stops. So I've already played around with this a little bit in my workshop where I have it mounted and it takes about 30 seconds for it to go all the way up or all the way down. So for the pulse time, I'm going to type in 30,000 milliseconds, which equates to 30 seconds. And then click Save Properties. And then let's go ahead and name these objects too. We'll just name that one Open. Name this one Close. And then for the pulse time for the second one as well, 30,000 milliseconds. Again, remember your values are gonna be different. Let's go ahead and connect the triggers from each of the time of day service objects and put it into the imports of the pulse stretchers, just like that. So once we have done that, now we can work on the open and close buttons that we created. Remember, we want these, you push it once and then it'll make the shades go all the way up or all the way down. So this first one, this is the open button. We'll take that and just drag it to the end port for that open pull stretcher. And then let's just go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And then we'll do the same for the close buttons, just like that. There we go. Now what we need to do, I'm just gonna scroll out a little bit. I'm going to select these, move it, extend it a little bit, there we go. Just to give it some more room. And now what we need to do is take the out port for this open pull stretcher and just put it into the N2 port for that open digital land. We'll uh, clean it up a little bit here. And then we'll do the same for the close. Make sure it goes to the N2 port, not the N1, because the N1 is where the door contact is. So now we have all these buttons and the services going to these AND logic gates, but they won't do anything to the motor unless they know that the door or window is closed from this door contact object. Now next, let's take things a little bit further and let's add in a door status for our dashboard so we can know what door is open or closed, if you have multiple doors and shades and so forth. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and bring in a couple static string objects here. We have this one and this one. And then now let's bring in a number compare code object, just like this. And then next, let's go ahead and for the number one port on that number compare object, keep it at zero. And then for the number two port, we are going to set to trigger. You can just go ahead and clear that value. Click Save Properties. And then we're going to drag the door contact to that number two port. So now every time that door contact sends a value out, it will trigger this port and then trigger this logic. And it also removes the need to use this trigger port here on the object as well. 
And now let's go ahead and bring in our interface text object. And this is where the message is going to be displayed on our dashboard. Let's go ahead and name this workshop door. And then same for this one, we'll do workshop door. So that way we know this text object only gives us information about the workshop door. You can assign that to whatever different doors or windows you have. And now for the group, let's go ahead and create our own group for this as well. So under Dash Builder, go back to that group, select that Motor Shade Control tab, add the group, and then let's just type in door slash window status, and then click Create. And let's go back to the properties here. We have our workshop door label. Make sure you select the group to door window status, and then click Save Properties. Now next, let's go ahead and just take the outstring ports and put those into the in port for that text interface object. Rearrange everything a little bit. Now, so what's gonna happen here with this number compare is when the door contact is together, when a door or window is closed, it's gonna send a signal of one, since it's a digital hardware, and that's because of the way we wired it as a pull down circuit. So what this logic will do is it'll take the value from number one and it's gonna compare it to the value of number two. So the value of zero here is going to be less than the value of one that the door contact is gonna put into number two. So when that happens, that's gonna send a signal out the less port and we can drag that to the trigger of this static string. And this will be the one where We'll name this that the door is closed. So go ahead and type the object name into that. And then let's fill in the string. So this will be the message that's going to that interface text object. So we'll say closed. And then click Save Properties. Now next, when the door contact is separated, it's going to send out a value of zero. So what happens there is the number one port, the value of zero is going to equal the value of zero, that door contact is gonna give value number two. So that equal port, let's go ahead and drag that to this trigger port on the string. Let's name this open, click Save Properties, and then for the string, let's type in our message. We want it to say open. So go ahead, and once you type that in, click Save Properties. So there you have it. This is our application for our very elaborate motorized shade and make it automated. So we have our buttons here to control the shade to go up and down based on how long we hold the button down. We have our open and close buttons that will have the shade go all the way up to its limit or all the way down to its limit because that signal is gonna be extended by this pulse stretcher. And then we also have our time of day services which will send a trigger to those pulse stretchers to tell the motors to go up or down based on the time of the days that we set for this. And then we'll also have our dashboard display the status of that door as well if it's open or closed so we can see that when we control everything as well. And then we also have our digital and logics here that will prevent any of these systems to trigger the motor unless they know that the window or door is closed via this door contact. So let's go ahead and save our app, turn to our apps, and now let's go ahead and do a quick demo. We'll do the rest of the setup back at the workshop, but let's go ahead and make sure our circuit works and our app works. So we'll click the play button here. Now we're gonna have to map all the hardware objects that we just use in our app. So for the workshop door, door contact, it's under the shades and contact client, which we named workshop door. Now for the close button, we have the push button named close. There we go. For shade one, we have that as shade one for our shades and contact client. We have our down button. Then we also have our up button and then our open button. So now that's everything's mapped, let's go ahead, click done, click save and run. And now let's go over to our dashboard. Go ahead and click that app. All right, so now that we're on our dashboard, you see the three groups here. We have our open and close buttons, our up and down buttons, and then our door status for the workshop door. So going to our circuit here, as you can see we have our 
door contact. And then when they're put together, you can see the door status says closed. Now when I separate them, it says open. So let's go ahead and keep it apart. Now we have our tubular motor here. I put some tape on here so you can see that spinning. And then now with the door contact closed and say I want to push the down button for the shade to go down, which is this one here, but the system knows that the door is open, it shouldn't let this motor spin. So when I push the down, as you can see, nothing's happening. But now if I put the door contact together, you can see the door status says close on the dashboard, and I hold down the down button, and there you go. You can see that the motor is spinning. So I want it to go up, I'll make it go up. But if I separate the contact again, it won't go. See, there you go. And it works for the open and close buttons as well. But this one, remember, is tied to the pull stretcher, so it's gonna make the shade either go all the way up or all the way down. So let's go ahead and close this. Say I want it to go all the way up. There you go. So now it's reached its limit for this motor that's already been set by me. So that's why it stopped early, but it'll go for 30 seconds if it's all the way down or all the way up. So that's just a quick demo on how everything we just did works. Let's go ahead and go back to our workshop. We'll put this tubular motor into our roller shade and then we'll do the limit sets for this tube and then we'll run it a couple times and see how it works. Now that the circuits and program works, let's assemble everything together. Start by lining up the grooves and slide the motor into the roller shade. Make sure the motor fits snug in the tube. Next, mount the shades above your door or window. Now place the shade motor circuit in a discrete location that is close enough for you to place the door contact to the door. Next, power your circuit with the 12 volt 1 amp power supply. Now that we have our motor shades and push button circuits powered on, let's test our program and make sure everything works. Start by pressing the up and down buttons to ensure the shade moves up and down as long as you are pushing down on the buttons. Make sure to test the push buttons on your remote as well as the associated interface buttons on the dashboard interface. If you see the motors moving in the wrong direction, you can fix that by either switching the wires of the DC motor that are connected to the H-bridge, or you can go into the program and switch the connections to the clockwise and counterclockwise ports on the motor hardware object. Once you have your shades moving up and down correctly, it's time to set the motor's height limits. To do this, follow the instructions provided with the tubular motor. You will have to press the settings button on the tubular motor until you hear a beep. Once the motor is in the configuration mode, use the quantum system to move the shades up and down to the desired heights you want. Now that you have set up your top and bottom limits for the shades, we need to configure the open and close functionality of the program. To do that, we will time how long it takes the shades to move from one limit to the other while pressing the up or down button. Once you have your time, add on a few seconds and input that time into the pulse time ports of your two pulse stretcher objects in your program. And remember to convert your time into milliseconds. Now test that you have added enough time to the pulse stretchers for your shades to fully open or close. If not, add more time to those objects. Next, test that the door contact and safety mechanism is working. Open and close the door to see that the correct status message is displayed on the dashboard. Now keep the door open and try to move the shades with your program. If they do not move, that means the safety mechanism works. Now make sure they move when the door is closed. Lastly, let's test the time of day service. Either add an extra time of day service object or use one of the existing ones, make sure the current day of the week is set to true, and then change the time to a couple minutes from now. At that time, you should see the shades either fully open or close. Once that is working, the configuration and testing of the motor shades project is complete. So that's how you create your own automated motorized shades with the quantum system. 
Make sure you check out those links in the video description below for all the information you need about this project. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.